Hey guys, how's it going? It seems like uh, after my last video release, a few people did really actually want a Thursday update. Uh, so I'm going to get into that video, but uh, I want to respond to Pat Gunther's comment on the last video. He said, you know, I showed my sports bets, but I didn't show my uh, DraftKings winnings, proving that I won around $7,000. So I'm actually going to go through, um, to start this video, I'm going to send uh, a couple screenshots so you guys can take a look at those. Uh, the first one's going to show I started off the week really hot. I was at about $69,000 at the beginning of the first quarter of the first games. Um, you know, I'm going to show you some screenshots of my, you know, my username up there with all the top pros. You're going to see Sally uh, for the office and Ray of Hope all up there with me in one contest. You're going to see in the next screenshot another contest that I'm in a single entry. I'm in fourth place. Um... Then I uh, will show a sample of one of the lineups I had in that was doing pretty well for that week. And then I will show you what I finally ended up with, which was about $6,564 when it was all said and done. I was at about $16,000, but Julian Edelman went and caught a last minute uh, touch, or not touchdown, but a long, long pass, the last minute of the games that week. And it knocked me down from, you know, 16,000 down all the way to, you know, right around 7K. So uh, first, I got to pause the video so I can, uh, you know, let you guys take a look at those. So proof is in the pudding there, and then we'll get back to my video. All right, well, now you guys have uh, seen that. My apologies for not putting that in the last video. I know nobody likes a liar. Uh, but, yeah, now you have my username, and, uh, you know, you go on those metrics. Uh, I no longer have the three bars of gold logo. Um, my new logo is my uh, tattoo. Uh, so if you guys are looking for me on the leaderboards in the 3 or $4 entry this week or in the future, uh, that's the logo you should be looking for. All right, so now we can get back, uh, you know, back to it and give you um, a few things that I'm going to talk about this, for this week. Um, I want to go over the sports bets, uh, changes I actually have made for the weekend. Uh, I want to go over, um, you know, my fantasy tip for the week uh, for all you beginners out there, something that I think showing you and once you understand, uh, it will really help you grasp concept into winning these contests going to go with my uh, three locks of the week and then final finally I'll be discussing some lineup variations I made I actually mass entered two contests and I'm going to explain due to the amount of contest entrance in each contest it made me kind of change the way I'm doing things and that's something really important for you guys to learn as well when entering GPPs you know if there's uh, 400,000 lineups you're competing against compared to 40,000. It's a tremendous difference in what you should be doing and looking for. All right, so we're going to follow up with that, and I'll get going here in a second. Okay, guys, so right now I'm just going to really quickly get into uh, the sports bets changes and a uh, new pick I have, uh, just in case people don't care about DFS and they're only here to hear what uh, you know some picks are. Um, you probably heard I was pretty unsure about the Atlanta Green Bay game last video, and I told you I was doing like a 5-5 with a two-team with the Packers. Um, I'm still keeping Packers as my pick, uh, even though I'm nervous about it because I'm trying to go 100%, so I gotta I gotta pick Atlanta or Green Bay, so I'm sticking with that with the spread. Um, but I talked to the book, I cut that in half, and actually put. The, the 250 back on the Patriots and the under of the Patriots game. And in the last video I said unders and overs are sucker bets, although if I do bet one, I'm going to bet the under. All right, so here's where we're at with this. Um, I did some more research, and this game line opened. The odds makers are putting, we're putting this game at 44 or 44 and a half. It's the public that has boosted this game up to that 50 and a half, 51 mark. All right, it's nothing else. Uh, you know, the makers were saying something otherwise. So what I started doing is I started trying to project scores for this game in my head. And the ones I'm coming up with are 
um, 30 to 14, 33, 17, and every projected score I'm coming up with is coming up with the under. And then Le'Veon Bell, the best running back in the league, you can always rely on that to kill some clock. Uh, so with that being said, I don't know, I think that game's going to, you know, I still think it's going to be maximum, you know, probably two touchdowns, Steelers, four touchdowns uh, for the Patriots. Uh, but I am going under with that, so that's my update. All right, guys, now I want to do um, a big tip for all you beginners out there that are still definitely trying to, you know, learn more about DFS and the aspects of winning. So I'm going to show you this really quick. All right, so if I were to tell you um, Aaron Rodgers scored 30 fantasy points this week and Tom Brady scored 26.3 fantasy points, points this week and I asked you what quarterback is going to be in the GPP winning lineup what would you say all right well if your answer was Aaron Rodgers you are most likely wrong and here's why and this is a very important lesson I said most likely too and I'll explain that even though Aaron Rodgers got these 30 points to Brady's 26.3 and has those extra points to go above him doesn't mean he's going to be the winner okay so we're going to take Aaron Rodgers first. Aaron Rodgers on DraftKings this week has a price tag of $8,100, okay? So if you divide 30 fantasy points by his price tag, you come out with $270 cost per point. So it's costing you $270 for Aaron Rodgers every time he scores one point. Well, if you take that number, 7100 and divide it by Aaron Rodgers' cost per point of 270, you come out with 26.3 fantasy points. So what does that mean? That means Tom Brady met the exact same value as Aaron Rodgers did this week, the exact same. So when I go back to that question, you guys are wondering, well, why does that mean Brady's most likely in you know the top of the lineups and not you know Rogers so you know your metrics here and how these numbers were calculated what are we missing here $8,100 to $7,100 these players got the exact same value but Brady did it at a price tag of $1,000 less so what does that mean for all of you DFS players out there well, just this week alone, this would mean the difference of you being able to put in Julio Jones over Julian Edelman at a price difference of $900. The difference of putting Taylor Gabriel in over Hogan, a price tag of $1,000. The difference of upgrading to Sanu over Allison, price tag $700. That extra $1,000 in fantasy budget gives you $1,000 to open up your lineups and do more things with. So this is very big when understanding fantasy and obtaining value. I'll let you do your own homework and I'm gonna go into my locks of the week um, here and I'm gonna give you a little example so you can run the numbers for yourself with a very realistic stat line and you can kind of see what I'm talking about with my first lock of the week. Lock number one, Le'Veon Bell. And when I mean a lock, I mean lock him in your closet, throw away the key, and don't play the guy. All right? He, again, by showing you this chart, I hope you're understanding a little bit about a player getting value and hitting value. So here's my homework for you. I actually haven't ran the complete numbers by this, but I'm going to give you two stat lines. I'm going to say Le'Veon Bell catches two balls for 20 yards. Remember, DraftKings is one point PPR. 20 yards, that's an extra two points. He rushes for 180 yards so he also gets his 3.100 yard bonus he does not make it to the end zone right but total yardage 200 yards okay Jermaine Alice or I'm sorry Ty Montgomery let's say he runs the ball 11 carries 50 yards catches another five balls for 50 yards and finds the end zone once find his price tag Find Le'Veon Bell's price tag, 
and look at what player is meeting value and what one is exceeding the value. And you're going to see something when you have a player that not only met but exceeded a player's value. And I haven't ran the numbers, so I'm not 100% sure, but I can only imagine. It's astounding. And then also know that you have, what, f almost 44? Let's see here. You know, almost $4,000 to $5,000 in extra budget to throw around somewhere else. You know, that could be upgrading your defense to make sure you have the Patriots defense. Or it can be a tremendous upgrade, like a player from, you know, heck, even Taylor Gabriel all the way up to Julio Jones. You know, and those are the lineup changes and the lineup metrics that are going to make, you know, make the winning lineup um, by understanding value of certain players when they're overvalued and you can't be putting them in. So when I'm talking about Rodgers and Brady... Here's a really good example of when you guys are right. Rodgers definitely is going to be the winner. Let's say I had the best possible Tom Brady lineup you can have in DraftKings this week. But of the $50,000 budget, it only cost me $49,000 to make the best possible Tom Brady lineup. Well, sorry everyone who had the best possible Tom Brady lineup, but that extra $1,000 was enough to plug in Aaron Rodgers who now these, you know, 3.7 points or 4 points are going to variate, you know, to um, all the Aaron Rodgers lineups being winners. So that goes the bell. That goes my lock, and my lock is not playing them. All right, second lock of the week, it's the same as, um, you know, prior I told you, Patriots defense. When you're looking at defenses, you guys might try to run these numbers and say, well, wait, if I'm running these value metrics, you know, these lower end defenses, even though they're almost guaranteed to get scored on like crazy, they might get or meet value. But the thing is, there's floor ceiling as well. And a floor is the lowest possible potential for a defense to get. And a lot of defenses could even score negative points this week. But the Patriots ceiling their ceiling could be 20 points. I mean, if you can get a you know a defensive touchdown or special teams touchdown like they did last week and a couple sacks or you know interceptions, they can easily climb to about a 20 point you know defense. And I think they're the only defense that has that capability this week. And if they do do that, if you see them pass 15, 16, you know up to 18 points, I can guarantee you can't. You, you, I mean, the other lineups are just. I probably won't hit pay lines. You're just gonna. It's gonna be untouchable unless in the Green Bay Atlanta game. You know, you got someone that ends up getting. Uh, you know, on an indoor fast field, could easily run a special teams touchdown back or an interception. It's always very possible. Um, but you know, Patriots. That's my second lock of the week. Plug them in. Be confident with them. My third lock of the week. Told you guys I'd do a little bit more research. And Taylor Gabriel, I'm putting in 100% of lineups. I don't, you guys listen to me here. Just do this. Make sure he's in every one of your lineups. He's the most likely player to meet or exceed value in one of the highest projected scoring games. And he's it, just everything about it is right. He has by far the best wide receiver to cornerback matchup of the week, by far out of anyone. Uh, all Atlanta wide receivers have pretty good uh, matchups, but he by far is the best. And plug him in. I have him locked into 300 lineups, um, and I'll get into the 300 lineups after this. But um, yeah, um, that's going to be my big play for you. I mean, I, I don't care what you guys do. You don't have to listen to me on what I'm doing with this Tom Brady contrarian thing. Um, that That's not a fact. But if you do do Ryan or Rogers, please do Lock and Gabriel. I think that's the best advice I can give you. Uh, so now let's talk about a little bit of the mistakes that I've even made and how much things could change in just two days. You guys know you saw my video on Tuesday. Um, not putting Deion Lewis, remember when I said I'm fading all New England running backs, not having Deion Lewis is a really stupid play on my part. Not only for the fact that, you know, he, he's coming off a good game, but Blunt can come back in here in two and jam it in. But if I have Tom Brady and all the lineups and he does throw four touchdowns, I, I'm screwed if one goes to Deion Lewis and I'm going to just feel like an idiot. I mean, it, I'll be right on the same contrarian line of possibly paying out huge and then completely get blown out and I just can't allow that. Um, 
the only player, and it, there's always slight risk to this, but I am fading Michael Floyd. As you know, um, Patriots just pick up players uh, based on their needs. And if there's injuries or concerns like that, they're just going to find a player and have them plug in. Uh, Michael Floyd had, you know, had a pretty bad game last week, and Danny Amendola is getting better. And Danny Amendola, I project to see twice the amount of opportunities, so up to four targets, maybe one or two runs even. And at the minimum price, I think he's 3,100. I'm taking a shot with him. My bold prediction of the week, if Tom Brady throws four touchdown passes, one goes to Danny Amendola because they are going to specifically design one, at least one red zone play around him. And uh, that's what's pretty cool about DFS. That makes me love it. You, when you start, you know, putting 40 hours, 50 hours a week into this and you start doing all these, you know, research and correlations and statistics, it is amazing what you will be able to tell people before the game starts. Now, everything that you think happens doesn't always happen, but the opportunity for it to have happened always happens. If you are projecting... Uh, let's say AJ Green, a monster game. I guarantee you, there's those two or three bomb passes that he maybe dropped, or he got they got flagged for passing interference or a drop touchdown catch, and and that's how things vary. If uh, you know Amendola hits for that little touchdown, that's going to be nice, a little pay dirt player. Um, very unlikely for a lot of people to have him. I don't think he's someone that you'd want to have too much of, uh, but I do have some exposure to him, and that's one of the new plays I made. So. I gave you guys pretty much my metrics on the first GPP I entered. So I did mass enter one more uh, for 150 lineups. And this time, the lineup entries are going from 441,000 to like 49,000, I believe. So I made some big changes here. Um, you know, of all the you know players I liked and talked about, uh, I began fading additional players to restrict my lineup correlations to have the most possible outcomes of just hitting huge. Sanu, I took Sanu off. Uh, you guys, I know, I'm sure that's really risky, but, uh, you know, he has a good floor, uh, but I'm really concerned about his ceiling, especially after Gabriel completely took off his spot. And I love Julio Jones, Devontae Freeman, and Taylor Gabriel this week. So if I love these guys so much, there's there's just not that much to go around. And, uh, you know, his cornerback uh, matchup is by far probably the worst of the team this week. So um, put a fade on Sanu. I put a fade on Coleman. And what I did is I inputted a little bit of blunt. Um, you know, if I am predict predicting uh, four touchdowns from the Patriots, it's very easy for Blunt to get one of those goal line carries. And if Tom Brady still throws three touchdown passes, I'm still good. So I'm pretty much on the Blunt train just for a little bit percentage. You know, four touchdown, Blunt gets zero, I'm golden. If those four are passed by Tom Brady, look for me in the leaderboards. If Blunt runs one in, it's going to hurt me a little bit. Now it's going to look at these value metrics that I'm talking about comparing Rodgers, Ryan, and Brady. Uh, number three, he gets two touchdowns. I am dead in the water. I'm done for. Game over for me. Oh, well. Uh, like I said, I go big or go home, and that's what I'm talking about with the whole Brady thing that I'm doing. Still have him locked into everything. And then I did enter a couple single entry and three entry maxes. Uh, one of the three entry maxes I'm in, I have one of my uh, Brady lineups, uh, a, a more risky one for trying to get a higher reward, like super contrarian. And then I also have, I had to create an Aaron Rodgers lineup, but I did create my far, my favorite, best of best Aaron Rodgers lineup, I think, that is out there on the slate. And I plugged that in for a single entry. So I will let you guys know how I do on all of that. Um, I think I went over pretty much everything here. Um, if you guys subscribed or are re-watching me for any reason and you like these videos and you're finding this stuff very helpful, uh, please like, subscribe, and uh, do comment below. Uh, what I really want is any input on some future topics. You know, I might start making this a weekly thing, uh, releasing videos for you uh, for, you know, even the upcoming Super Bowl weeks. If you guys have any questions about DFS, sports betting, anything that you just want to chime in on my ear, 
uh, you know, please do put that in, and I'm going to try to input that uh, next week and answer all of your questions directly if I can. All right. Um, hope you guys listen to me. If uh, Brady throws three or four touchdowns and is overvaluing them, definitely look for me in the top of the top. Otherwise, uh, Rodgers and Ryan are not bad plays, guys. Don't get me wrong. They're not bad plays. I just want to know when I'm entering a contest, let's say – Here's all the Brady lineups. Here's all the Rodgers and Ryan lineups. You know, when I'm stuck in here, it's hard to move up this big field. But when I'm stuck in here, I can easily move up the Brady field to be at the top. And then if the Brady field tops the Rodgers-Ryan field, boop, look how many pay lines you jump, okay? And that's what I want you to emphasize when making money in DFS. If you get caught in here, it's very hard for you to get return on your dollars because you are going to have losing lineups. And when you have your winning lineups splitting with people, that's murder for you. Split with less people, bump up the pay line, and make big money. All right, guys, good luck this week.